Hi, good evening and welcome to Sports Tuesday. I'm Julian Gibson. Happy New Year's Bahamas. Well, the Buller Edge Classy Regatta wrapping up yesterday in beautiful Georgetown Exuma. And you guessed it, Buller Edge once again winning it all. Skipper Buzzy Rule won two out of the three C-Class races. The boat sailed very well, you know. It uh, reflected the competition from uh, Touch Me Not and, and Golden Girl, man. We had, it was pretty great. The third race, uh, the wind dropped, the rain came down, uh, but you still was able to hold your own. Well, uh, it wasn't me was sailing, my son was sailing, LJ, and, and they did very well, you know. Uh, they, they took the lead from early and, and they, they just maintained it, you know. It was great. How was the competition out there when you look at all the boats? Uh, how would you summarize the competition? The competition is very stiff, you know. Uh, better come down to the fluky win and stuff like that. The best skilled man is the one who really come out on top most of the time. We look like your son is following some good footsteps. He's doing very well. He's doing very well. I hope he keep it up, you know. Get more youngsters involved, you know. It's pretty great. Now for two of the boats that sail, they believe pretty soon they will be able to catch up at Buzzy and Buller Edge. I wanted to disregard it for one reason. To prove to those guys that anybody I go in could win. Any one of them. How was the competition out there when you summarized it the last couple of days? It's a good, good tough com competition. The guys, um, they're sailing this boat when this boat is very fast, you know, and whatever happens at the end of the day, you have to deal with it. You wasn't fast enough to beat Buzzy. I could beat him, man. He just get away. Always getting away. <laughs> you been getting away for a pretty long time? Yeah, it's coming to end soon. It's soon, soon, soon. I love this regard, you know, but Bolivar regard is very good. I like the way they bring it on and all the guys are getting involved and, you know, it's, I like it. To me, it was exciting because uh, we were very competitive. With the Lady B, the Lady B was just built recently, but the only thing is with the Lady B, uh, we never put a lot of time into it. So you guys, when you summarize it, uh, you, you don't feel bad because it's a new boat. No, we don't feel bad, right, because there's always room for improvement. And the thing is with the Lady B, uh, we came in fourth on, on Saturday and we came in second today. And in the middle, of the, on, on the second race, we didn't do too well, but there's always room for improvement. I think that boat will be reckoned with in Farmer's Gate. Now for organizers of the Buller Edge Class Series, so they are all pleased with the turnout, even though they could not get in the final cup race in Class C. It is uh, um, a success, you know. Um, everything went well, you know. You know, like you said, the rain came down in our last series of race, but um, we will continue to try to get the cup race in, uh, maybe uh, on Saturday. It was a smashing success. Uh, we are grateful to all the boaters, all the skippers, the boat owners, the crew, and indeed the community of Exuma who ensured that we had a wonderful 10th annual Balway Edge Regatta. So overall, Julian, yes, I would say it was a success. In spite of us not being able to sail the cup race, which we are now postponing until Saturday coming, and we hope to get that off on Saturday along with the closing ceremony. The New Providence Holiday Basketball Classic is all finished and done with. Now the coaches that participated all agree it's a good classic during the slow Christmas break. And that's what we're about uh, at St. George and I figure every program would be about is about exposure and uh, that's what we want to do is expose them to again not just a style of play but hopefully get an opportunity. You never know who's in the gym and that's what we want. We want somebody to hopefully see them and give them an opportunity but you know right now as, as, as bad as things is in Grand Bahama we need something that we could uh, you know hang our hats on and be proud of and you know we're proud of our team. During this time of the year it's always best to have such a, an event uh, that will keep the kids active and out of trouble and being idle you know and, uh, and it helps us to improve our uh, play as we move into what's the second half of the season whether it's the BAISS, the GSSSA or the Grand Bahama High School or even these Family Islands Association so uh, it's a good thing for, for Jester for KJ to put on such an event. Uh, Emil along with his uh, club and, and, the, and the CI Gibson High School but this is definitely something we need in the neighborhood more. This is a good tournament to come to and uh, stay prepared for the new season coming up. It's all about them getting better and uh, staying in good condition. More than anything, win or lose, it's for them to get comfortable with this environment and, and know how to play the FIBA international rules because in freeboard we don't. So this is an adjustment form. And still talking basketball, Coach Prince Clark is now back home in the Bahamas after working in the Houston area in the United States for a number of years. It's a move he decided to make after some brainstorming. For one, Magnum Road, um, Big Baby Davis. For four years I worked with Big Baby Davis, four years in college, and I worked with Big Baby two years in the NBA. 
Um, we have a lot of other NBA players. Um, Kobe Bryant, I've worked with him. I've worked with Wynn Baker. I've worked with um, Moses Malone back in, uh, in the 80s. Uh, Clyde Drexler, Robert Reed, um, um, uh, Calvin Murphy, all these guys I've worked with. Somebody to ask, uh, all of that good work, working with all those stars in the States, making all that money, why are you down here basically working for peanuts? Well, I worked for those guys. Back then, they weren't paying a lot of money. We were being paid enough to get by on. But what's happening now is that I worked for John Lucas six and a half years developing his players. We don't, as coaches in development for John Lucas, we didn't get a lot of money. The players gave us so, so much amount of money and coach gave us so much amount of money. But you know, our funds were used to sustain ourselves. You know, I have a family in Houston, Texas. But that's, that's better than being down here. At least you was getting something back then. Well, I, I came home to see my mother, who was 95 years old, and I decided I would stay on and help out down here. Basically, I've been volunteering with Aaron Bailey. I want to apologize for actually this question up here, but persons might be asking, uh, did you come home, did you fall out of Greece in the States, did you have some difficulties, some challenges? Because people could be asking, why in the world you in the city of glory and you come down here? Did you have any challenges? I had some challenges, which in our race have challenges in life. Every day that, night that I go to sleep, I'm not guaranteed to wake up. Once I wake up, I have to face those challenges on a daily basis. Yes, I had some challenges in life. I've overcome a lot of my challenges, and there are still challenges that I have to overcome every day. Well, we want to wish uh, Prince Clark the best here in the Bahamas. That's all the time for sports on a Tuesday. Once again, I'm Julie.